Our triangle will consist of the real part of z cubed, the imaginary part of z cubed, and p. This means that these three quantities are positive. If the real and imaginary parts of z cubed are both positive, that puts z cubed in the first quadrant. Since the magnitude of z is the square root of p, in exponential form, we can write z as the square root of p times e to the i theta, which gives us the cube of z is p root p, e to the i 3 theta. This means one solution for z is also going to be in the first quadrant. There might be other solutions for z, but since we have p is equal to a squared plus b squared, where a and b are the real and imaginary parts of z, it's probably not going to matter for our purposes, and let's just assume that a and b are positive. Now let's use the rectangular form of z to find z cubed in terms of a and b. Expanding and collecting the real and imaginary terms separately, these are the rectangular coordinates of z cubed. So our triangle has side lengths, a cubed minus 3ab squared, 3a squared, b minus b cubed, and p, which is a prime number and positive. So we have that these other quantities are also positive. From the first inequality, we get that a squared is greater than 3b squared. And from the second, factoring out b, we get that a squared is greater than 1 3rd b squared. And since both of these need to be true, we only need to consider this inequality. Let's write out our expressions for a triangle inequality with these three side lengths. The sum of each of the two side lengths has to be greater than the third. Let's take a look at the first one. The magnitude of z cubed is p root p. This distance is the imaginary part, and this distance is the real part. By triangle inequality here, we have the sum of these two legs is greater than p root p. And since p is, an, is a prime, this is greater than p. So our first inequality is always satisfied. Now let's take a look at our second two inequalities. Let's rewrite these isolating the p. We'll combine these two into a chain inequality. So we can rewrite this as an absolute value, and we'll substitute our earlier values for the real and imaginary parts of z cubed. We'll rearrange the terms and factor out minus 3ab. We recognize the sum of cubes factorization and factor ab from both, both terms. We're still going with a and b are positive, so we'll pull out a plus b from inside the absolute value sign. Returning to our earlier restriction on a, we have a squared is greater than 3b squared, and we're looking for primes that are less than 1,000. So a squared plus b squared is also less than 1,000. Substituting for a squared, we get that 4b squared is less than 1,000. Dividing and comparing b to some perfect squares in the neighborhood, we have b as an integer between 1 and 15 inclusive. We're trying to maximize p, so we'll start with large values of b and work our way down. We also have that a is less than the square root of 1,000 minus b squared. And from this, we have that a is greater than b root 3. So we have this chain inequality that bounds a. Let's build a table of values. We're going to test some values of b, starting with the maximum value of 15. We'll find some approximate minimum and maximum values of a. So, for example, 15 root 3 is a little more than 25, and our upper bound of a is determined by the square root of this expression. We're going to be doing a lot of squaring of two-digit numbers. So to save some time, an Amy hack is to write down a table of squares. That way we can refer to this quickly without having to recalculate. You should have a bunch of these memorized, but you can also use this formula to generate consecutive squares. Now we can use this for reference with our calculations. Since a is a positive integer, our minimum value of a is 26. Comparing 775 to our list of perfect squares, we see that is just above 27 squared, so that's our maximum value of a. We're looking for a prime number that's the sum of the squares of a and b. Note that a and b can't have any factors in common, because when we square them and sum them, they'll have a common factor and it won't be a prime number. So we're going to pick values of a that don't have a 3 and a 5 in them. We'll start with the largest values of a. We'll exclude 27 because it has a 3 in its prime factorization, and we'll go straight to 26. Squaring and adding and checking our table of squares, we get 901. Now we need to test this against our triangle inequality expression. That was up here, so let's rewrite this in terms of a and b. Our prime is a squared plus b squared, 
Let's isolate our absolute value. We'll calculate each of these expressions, and we're looking for values of a and b with our absolute value less than this fraction. So I'll add these to the table. This inequality comparison, I'm going to use approximations. And if it starts to get close, then I'll use more exact calculation. So for example, with this absolute value, I'm going to approximate a squared plus b squared with 900. And I'll approximate 4ab as 4 times 25 times 15, giving me 1,500. This is approximately 600. Over here, I'm going to approximate this fraction with 900 over a plus b, which is approximately 40. This is roughly 20. There are orders of magnitude different, so I don't need greater precision than what I have here. This inequality fails, so we will move on to b equals 14. And we'll complete our table by approximating b root 3 and the square of our upper bound. The minimum allowed value of a, given that it's an integer, is 24. Comparing 804 to our table of squares, we see that the maximum value is 28. We'll start with the largest value of 8 and know that since 28 and 14 are both even, when we square them, we're going to get an even sum. So we're going to exclude all even values of a and begin with 27, 25, and we'll continue to complete the table. We notice here that our units digit of the sum is 5, so we can tell by inspection that it's not prime. And we'll go to the next one for a squared plus b squared. Our sum is 821, and we'll find an approximate difference. This is about 600. We'll approximate 820, and 25 plus 14 will round up to 40. This is somewhere around 20, so this inequality fails. And we continue on with b equals 13, and so on. I want to point out here as well that the sum of squares of two odd numbers is also going to be the sum of two odd numbers, which will be even and therefore not prime. So from this list of possible values of a, because b is odd, I'm going to exclude all a that are odd. So counting down from 28, I'll exclude 26 because it contains a factor of 13 and 24. Here again, we notice the units digit is 6 and 9. So we're going to have a sum that ends in 5 and not prime. So we can exclude that. Over here, I exclude 27 because it contains a factor of 3 and 12 contains a factor of 3. So when we square it, we're not going to get a prime number. Here we get 841 and 144. And looking at the units digit, we see that we're also going to get another number that's not prime. Notice that so far, with my inequality comparisons, there's an order of magnitude difference between the two things I'm comparing. So I don't need to be too careful about getting exact values here. Nothing here for b equals 11. Let's check b equals 10. Not even close. For a b equals 10, we'll try b equals 9. And nothing for b equals 9. We go on to b equals 8. We have to keep searching. Here are my calculations for b equals 7. We'll go on to b equals 6. We're getting closer with our inequality. Let's see if we find our solution with b equals 5. OK, we've evaluated all of these cases so far, and everything fails this triangle inequality test. We'll approximate 349 with 350. And we see that this absolute value expression is approximately 10. And the fraction on the other side is approximately 350 over 23. These are pretty close, so let's go for an exact calculation. On the left, we have 11. This fraction is 15 and 4 over 23. And now finally, we have the answer that satisfies our inequality. Our proposed prime is 349. We can check to make sure it's prime by checking some divisors. We don't find anything that divides evenly, so 349 is our answer. If you'd like me to solve any other contest problems, please leave them in the comments.